This episode is brought to you by PopCultureZone.com. For all your cleaning and pressing needs and as low as $5.99 a book, be sure to check them out. With over 8,000 books cleaned and pressed, PopCultureZone.com. What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo himself, and we are back. New comic book day. So, of course... We have that Bolo show for you. That's right. Now, a lot of people have reached out to me about the abbreviated list this week, thinking, Mr. Bolo, what's going on? Are you cutting down the list? Are we being more selective? Well, honestly, it's not even that. Again, the list is comprised of books that you guys out there all over social media are talking about. The truth is, this week, there just wasn't a ton of releases, and there was even less that you guys seem to be popping on. But we got the cream of the crop, and we're here to talk about it tonight. Welcome to the Bolo show. Yeah, and this is your first time here. We do a lot of comic and pop culture content on this channel, so please consider subscribing in case you're wondering what that BOLO list means. BOLO stands for Be On The Lookout, where we're covering those first appearances, reader buzz books, variant buzz books, and then Jack has a long-term play at the end. And we're getting into it right now, starting with first appearances. It's a short first appearance list this week. We just got one book on there, but it's a good one. It's boom. And we're talking about Buffy every generation number one. And we get introduced a new vampire slayer, correct? Yeah, you got a Filipino vampire slayer appearing in this book. And here's the thing. Now, people have been reluctant to get on board of some of these uh, first appearances within the Buffy verse. And I understand. But I think that there is a big difference between characters first appearing within the Boom series and characters like this who are organic, brand new created characters, I think there are a big difference between characters who have never appeared before in the Boom series to characters like this, who are organic, brand new created characters who are put into the Buffyverse intentionally uh, to, for future stories and to kind of create narrative. We've talked about this before on the channel. This is definitely a property that is gonna see a revival at some point, whether on streaming service or on the big screen. And these first appearance characters are definitely something to pay attention to. Now, this book shows up twice on this list, not only here in the first appearance section, but also in the variance section. That's because the incentive variant has been making a lot of noise on the secondary market. Andy Tomberlin, no stranger to the Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel, who writes the Indie Spotlight series, has been highlighting this book on social media, and it is one to pay attention to. We've seen Buffy variants like this spike before. So Buffy, every generation, it's a, a, a book to be paying attention to. Um, and it's uh, the next kind of like big installment since Hellmouth. And like we said, first appearance list was short. And that's what we got for you. But we're going to move right now into the reader buzz. And coming in just a little longer than the first appearance list, first up on the reader buzz list this week, we get the return of the boys with the boys, dear Becky, number one. Yeah, this is a book that it, I think if it would have come out a couple of years ago, uh, may have gotten little to no attention. It definitely got a lot of attention because of the success that the Amazon Prime series, I think it's maybe the most successful adaptation as far as one that has really like gotten fans excited for how true to the comic that it really was even changing the things that they changed still seem to keep the essence of what the comic is i mean it, it just an overall smash success so it, i'm not surprised to see the comic getting a uh, second life now there were some retailer exclusive variants for this book i saw a lot of different ones um a lot of art that i think was really appealing so there was a, people chasing those books um and and i think that that doesn't surprise me because we've seen in the market that like a book like this where there's it's not a first appearance driven book um beyond the reader buzz aspect of it variant collectors that they're, they're always looking for the best art and they sometimes the best art can be found in the retailer exclusive yeah i know a lot of people of course were chasing peach momoko's store exclusive for as well but the next one we have some reader buzz behind it. this is one i've been looking forward to the return as well and we get that return of joshua williamson's nail biter in Nailbiter Returns, number one. Yeah, this is a book that I think in a normal week probably wouldn't have made the list. Um, I, I, this is a series that you and I have discussed on this channel several times. Um, I think Nailbiter, number one, from the first volume is a solid book. It's always been kind of a $10 book. It's a, it's, as far as reader buzz, it, it has exceeded the supply, which is why it's an above 
um, cover price book regularly. At the same point, there's been a lot of talk of adaptation, never came to be. But I think I'm very bullish on the property, to use a term that I frequently use on the channel, because the fact that it's coming back, it's going to introduce new readers to the series if you read this and you like it maybe you, you get on board with the first volume maybe some hollywood exec pays attention to it uh so i i'm excited i think this will definitely hit home with the or fans of the original volume and hopefully we'll make some new ones yeah i agree I, like you said i like the return of it just because i loved it from a reader point yeah. of view but i also think that maybe the original series will get some regarnered interest from the return of the title as well. Then the last one we have on the reader bus section this week is detective 1022. You have this in the reader bus section as well as the variant buzz with that great Bermejo cover, right? Yeah. Uh, we talked about this last week. DC cover bees are standing out just by the lack of releases. People are looking for variants to chase and without these incentive Marvel books, that tend to draw a lot of attention or some of these uh, tough to get independent books. These DC cover B's are getting some second life. So there's a few in the variant buzz section and detective one, uh, 1022 was front and center with that Lee Bermejo cover. Amazing two face cover, very unique. Um, I love Bermejo's art, especially with everything Batman related. I think he, he tells the story of Gotham city very well with his kind of like dark kind of color composition. But, this is a reader buzz pick. That's the main reason why we're talking about this right now. This is a Joker War tie-in. So, you know, this is going to play in big. We've talked about selling books and sets. We've talked about collecting books and sets. I think that's really the next wave. People are collecting less and less entire runs. They're being more selective. But I think that those collectors in us who still miss those days of, like, baseball cards with your checklists and you're crossing off, I think that these tie-in series give you some of that feel especially, you know, you can be selective. We've talked about things like War of Realms wasn't one that we felt like invested in going to get all those tie-in books. We waited on the Omnibus. But this is one where I think that people are going to be on this. You got to watch out for first appearances popping up in any little book. You know, that definitely is something that rang true with Dark Knight's Metal. So this is one that I'm on top of. I'm, I'm following that Joker War checklist. And I think that a lot of the Joker War books and then the three Joker story afterwards, I think we're going to end up talking about on this portion of the list. Yeah, I, I tend to follow the tie-ins more on DC storylines than Marvel storylines. So I've, I've been keeping an eye on and picking up some of these Joker, Joker War tie-ins and they're spreading out. To me, it just seems like it's a little bit easier to collect at times, but mm -hmm. no doubt, pick this one up, but I haven't had a chance to read it yet. And that wraps up the Reader Buzz section. We're gonna move right over into the Variant Buzz. Coming in first on the variant buzz section, we get Batman Superman number nine. This was a gorgeous cover B from Mike Mayhew, right? Yeah, so this is another book where it's probably benefited from a short week. Mike Mayhew, again, you know what? Supporter of the channel guy who's a regular fan of the Bolo list. Shout out to Mike Mayhew. Um, definitely got to get you a Simpleman's Comics t-shirt. But he's a guy who... I feel like almost every piece of artwork he puts out, it, it, it's top notch. But for whatever reason, he hasn't penetrated that A-level like Pichu Moko. And I, when I say A-level, I don't mean A-level quality. I mean A-level as far as the secondary market commanded value. So I like the fact that this book got a lot of attention, that it stood out. It's, it's a little different from his art. It takes almost like a digitally rendered look, um, similar to what we see with, say, Art Germ or Derek Chu or Kendrick Lim, or In Hyuk Lee, or any number of, of the artists, uh, Ji Young Yoon, um, that we've seen. Yeah, very, kind of, um, yeah, kind of Jay Lee-ish, or... Yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's different for, for him, and I think that that helped it stand out. Uh, but either way, I'm all about seeing artists who you... I've seen Mike and Thayu so, so synonymous with Marvel characters, it's really cool to see him taking his talents and doing some DC stuff, so... I've liked the cover bees because of that, getting to see that variety of artwork. It's funny you mentioned art germ because the next one we're talking about is that Catwoman 80th. This was just like we talked about where DC has a bunch of those covers for it. It's probably, I won't say it's the biggest name on this list because a lot of other books, you know, 
fit that mold that especially i think the long-term play yeah. or the one we're getting into next but there's a lot of great artists doing covers on this you had adam hughes you had art germ the art germ one to me doesn't look like a normal art germ cover which i like yeah ji hung lee even did one i mean a whole bunch of great artists on here and of course then they had the, a blank fan as well right yeah and it wasn't a white blank it had kind of like that um purplish tint to it which i love that gives a lot of opportunity um so i i we've talked about this on the channel if you're new to the channel i know and we appreciate all of our new subscribers shout out to everybody we're very excited to have passed the fourteen thousand subscriber threshold but it, it's one of those things where we've talked about this this the the investors and the speculators and those flippers they get all mad about this kind of a pick we love these books these are great for the hobby get cool stories by a bunch of different uh writers if you're not reading these books they're they're fun stories there's 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 multiple stories within the book on top of it you get to kind of like pick your poison with the artwork and this is one brian this one cost me money because there were just so many covers that i was like ah i love this i love that you mentioned adam hughes you mentioned art germ um, the, of course, I'm all about, we're, we're blank boys. We love those blank covers. So, um, hey, Scott Campbell, it's like, yeah, some heavy hitters on there or some popular artists, I'll say. Yeah. Yeah. Ones that I like to stash, you know, mini collections of those artists, um, because you never know who's going to get that peach momoko fire. Um, and, and you, anyone who once had that heat can get it again. Um, so that's something that I always pay attention to. Yeah, like we always talk about the cycle and how stuff comes back around. And no doubt, artists are in that cycle as well. But then the last one we're talking about the variant buzz is that Birds of Prey number one, the J. Scott Campbell variant. This is also that prestige format, black label type, right? Yeah, very dope. Good J. Scott art here. Um, I like the design of this. Uh, a lot of messages about us not including this in the first appearance section. But here's the thing. Everybody messaged me the same way. They said, isn't there supposed to be some new team in it? Well, that's the verbiage that I know that like an app used, you know, for their first appearance section. And that's the verbiage I kept hearing, a new team. Um, and I don't know if it was just people passing on from other people. I, I don't want to do that, right? I want to be able to confirm a, 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 an appearance. Um, I felt like with the, the Buffy book, that was a little different because – it's, it's an event anytime there's a new Slayer entering into a book. Just simply saying a new team doesn't really give you a lot of information. So I, I didn't want to include it. it it's, to us, it's more important. Plus, we knew it was going to be on the list because of the art here. So there was already going to be reason for you to be paying attention to this book. But $9.99 cover price, so a little steep. Uh, you know, available a lot of places for about $7.99 that I've seen. But this is one of those things where if you like this book, this is why we have encouraged to pay attention to our last call show where we talk about pre-orders because we discussed this book and this is one of those situations where with a $10 cover price, if you could have maximized your discount, say 30, much 30 or 35, 40% at some places, you could have saved a lot of money on this book. So that's one thing we wanna, wanna always advocate, pre-order, uh, contact your local LCS. And if your LCS isn't doing the best deal, hit those online resources and find out who is, who will take care of you with your pre-orders. Yeah, and like you said, that is the last call show, and we are airing that every Friday night, 9 p.m. We are covering the comic books that are heading final order cutoff the next coming Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern. Those are great books, great titles. Like you said, it's 23 days in advance before release. It's like the last chance to get those orders into Diamond and secure your copy. And like he said, take full advantage of those pre-orders because a lot of LCSs, a lot of online places do give great discounts. And that wraps up the Variant Buzz section been a short list it was a short release but we saved the best for last and we have jets long term play then coming in this week for jack's long term play it's been a while since we've talked about the idw gi joe series but here nonetheless we have number 271 but we're talking about the cover b and one in ten variant right Right. Well, the cover B variant, it was focused on the, in the, um, the variant portion. It sold out at Midtown, but I, I honestly have to make the point that I think that there was a lot of confusion because some uh, websites, when they talked about the one in 10, they actually posted an image of the cover B. So I do think that that impacted people's um, 
kind of belief that that was the book to go for. Uh, that book's still available for cover price. The one in 10 uh, is starting to dry up, which is what, again, which is why we frequently talk about G.I. Joe books on the channel. And IDW books in general, this is two weeks in a row we're covering an IDW book. Um, the last one uh, somebody may have felt was obvious. This one we know is not obvious. We know other people aren't talking about it. And it's one that not only are we talking about now, but we talked about this, this storyline, Snake Hunt, pre-FOC of the very first issue. And now we're coming towards the conclusion. But why I really like this is really about the artwork. Um, this is done by John Royal. If you're not familiar with John Royal, he, he does a lot of G.I. Joe books. Now, he's done some other uh, variant covers, but he's most known for G.I. Joe. But he came up under the same kind of tutelage as Ail Garza and J. Scott Campbell, as well as Paul Green. And they came up under that um, Michael Turner. Yeah. Darwin kind of, Cook is in there too, right? I think so. And other than Darwin Cook, uh, they all kind of have a similar look and style. And that's why you may look at this cover and go, the nose looks like J. Scott Campbell. Yeah, absolutely. When people look at John Royal's work, they do immediately equate it to J. Scott. But because of that, I think that's the benefit. When you look at this cover, imagine if J. Scott Campbell did a cover. Uh, it's been a long time since he used to do G.I. Joe covers, but he did used to do G.I. Joe covers. Um, you know, he, he, imagine if he did this cover and you had Storm Shadow as well as kind of like the pinup girl that he's got in the cover with, you know, the low cut shirt and all of that. Um, I, that would be a smash success. Everybody on the secondary market would be talking about it. This is a book that's going to definitely get overlooked this week. It's definitely going to get ignored. There's only a few available on eBay. One's an auction at cover price. Uh, the other it, two, I think, are asking like $16. So you're already above ratio. But when that dries up, that book, I'm telling you, this is one. If you at all trust what I've talked to you guys about over the last year about IDW variants, G.I. Joe variants, the, the, the way the fandom it's still, this is one of the few aspects of completionism that exist within the hobby is these, these kind of niche markets. Um, if you had all buy into that concept and you've seen some of these returns that we've shown you over the last years on G.I. Joe, Ninja Turtles, Star Wars. Um, I mean, these are properties that Masters of the Universe that you're starting to see all of your speculation news sources talking about now. We were talking about them a year ago. We were talking about them when we first linked up together. It was one of the pr core principles uh, that really Brian and I agreed on. There were several of them. That, that's really truly one of them. And we're seeing it come to fruition now. And this is one that I think is going to follow that path. I think when you look at this book five years from now, and please remember, that's why we talk about this as the long-term play of the week. When you look at this book five years from now, I really think that this book will have dried up on the market. And with the way this cover art is, this will be a book that people will be paying a pretty penny for. And I strongly believe this is G.I. Joe issue 271. As we head towards G.I. Joe 300, and we head towards the G.I. Joe films, which will be like hitting trailers around the time of G.I. Joe 300, I'm strongly, strongly in the belief that G.I. Joe is going to become a big-time property. So buy now, buy while it's cheap, and make that long-term play. It's one of those things where it's always bittersweet, right? Because book yeah. that you love and love to read and pick up and, and been reading it. And it, it I'm not going to say it gets mainstream success because everyone knows who G.I. Joe is. But yeah, I start turning towards it and the books get harder for you to pick up. Right. But either way, I enjoyed the long-term play again this week because both big G.I. Joe fans, I will concede that you are bigger G.I. Joe than I am more masters of the universe but i have been loving we like you said we talked about this whole uh this whole current arc since the last call of the first issue on it but there's jack's long-term play of the week and with that being said guys do us a favor click that thumbs up button for us and like we said earlier tomorrow night we will be airing the new episode of the last call covering books hitting final order cutoff and then of course if you were used to our top 10 back issues being on Thursday nights that has moved to Monday nights since the Bolo show has returned. That's right. And if you like those top 10 back issues, be sure to head to simplemanscomics.com where we've taken the first 10 
videos, put them together, compile them into a great ebook over 130 pages that also features anecdotes from Brian and I, as well as our buying strategies, selling strategies, things to avoid and things to be on the lookout for. For Brian and Jack, this has been Simple Moons Comics. We will see you in the next video.